All right, so as you can see, I've been working on some alloy wheel designs for the past couple of weeks. I tried out a lot of different things, which I'm gonna cover in this video. But if you remember from last time, the reason I've gone toward doing this is because I wanna move from a configuration like this one, where we're using a universal joint and an axle to couple with a motor shaft. There was just too much movement there, um, unnecessary vibration, and it's not as efficient as it could be. So what I've decided to do is move towards something a bit like this, where we're coupling directly to the wheel. And that way you've just got instant torque, instant power, everything's there. It's the most efficient it can possibly be. There's no losses between any of the axles or the joints. And I think this is gonna be the best way to do it, to limit vibration and just remove any of those unwanted issues. So these are two of the alloys side by side. This one here is the original and this came with the tires, but this one here is my own design alloy that I showed you from Fusion 360. And the reason I went down this route, if you remember from the last video, I mentioned that the motors came with a little attachment like this, which basically allows you to couple something directly to the motor. So the problem with the original is in here, there's obviously a hex nut, which is typically how you'd connect um, a wheel to the axle of an RC car. This is pretty standard, but obviously, my fitting here is very different and that's not gonna work. So luckily I've been able to design these things in CAD and I've been able to design this fitting perfectly for my own little coupler. So basically this just goes straight in like that and push it through. And then that allows you to use these four bolts to directly bolt it to that piece. The bolts then protrude out past this little attachment and into the motor itself. So it's a really solid coupling. Another good thing as well is you get this large thread here. So if you really wanted to, you could put a nylock nut on there for additional support. But the way it turned out, I was really happy with it. And I, I coupled it to the motor. And the first thing I noticed was just how little vibration there was when it was spinning. And that was a really positive sign. So as you saw at the start of the video, I tried out a few different approaches. Uh, this one is identical to the original, aside from the coupling. And uh, this was just a test to see if I could create that hub and couple to the motor. That was successful and I was pretty happy with that one. The next thing I tried was to do something like this where I thought I'd be able to sort of stuff the tire in that gap and kind of have it just hold itself in. The problem I had with this was mainly with the printing. You can see it stuffed a lot of infill in there um, and it was just impossible to get out and I actually ended up breaking it while trying to get it out. So again, I gave up with that one. This one wasn't too bad to be fair. This kind of worked. And what I thought with this one was, I'll add a bit of a lip to the outside to try and hold the tire on because the Gorilla Tape actually did stop a lot of the ballooning. So the tire essentially stopped going out this way. But what I started to do then was obviously it couldn't go up any further. So it starts to do this. It starts coming outward instead. The tire was still stretching a little bit around the rim. And what would happen is when you slow back down and you come down to lower RPMs, it would never sort of seat itself nicely around the edge again, it was kind of warping itself. So what you'd end up with is the alloy not actually being in the center of the tire. So it would be slightly offset and you'd have a section of tire over here that was thinner than over here. So that was a no go. It was at this point that I thought, how can I design something that let me essentially grip the tire to the alloy itself? So let me show you what I did in Fusion 360. So this is the new design of the alloy and basically I've split it up into three parts. If I hide this section here, you can see what was one piece I've now split up into two. And if I hide the front part of the alloy, you can see what I've done is I've basically created a way that I can bolt these together. So I've left some holes here for the bolts to go in and on the other side, you can see there's the holes I left for the nut as well. So they'll bolt together really nicely. I've got this inner piece here as well. So by bolting these two outer pieces together, we can bring them closer and jam the bead of the tire in these two gaps here. I think this is gonna work really well. I 3D printed my design and I've ended up with these three parts. So this one here is the back part. And as you can see, there's holes around there that I've left for those nuts on the back. So I'm able to bolt in from the other side. This is the front part, obviously where we've got the hub and the coupling in there. And again, the corresponding holes around the edge. And this part is basically just a hollow cylinder. This is the essential part in securing the tire to the alloy. It's really simple how it goes together. This is the bottom piece. And basically this cylinder piece just slides over it. And then you just drop in the front piece on the top. And if I turn it on the side here, 
you can see what I'm kind of doing here. So if I pull it apart, so if I show you the tire, you can see it's got this lip around the edge here. And essentially what I'm doing is you put the tire on and you, you, you jam that lip in between cylinder piece and the outer edges of the alloy. And then using the bolts on the front, you tighten that up and it just locks the tire between these small gaps. And that's basically it, and it works really, really well. So what I'll do now is I'll put all this together, I'll secure the tire to the alloy, and we'll give it a test. As you can see, it goes together really easily. You just use those seven bolts around the edge. That pulls the two outer pieces together, and it jams the bead of the tire between the center piece. So for this particular test, ignore the ballooning for the moment, I took the foam out and I also took the Gorilla Tape out from the inside. One thing I did notice was that without the Gorilla Tape, the tire's a lot more balanced, so I've decided to leave that out for the moment. But you can see that the bead is holding really, really well. There's a lot of force acting on that, pulling it outwards. I did even ramp it up to full speed as well. So for this particular test, it's working. I'm happy I've solved that particular issue. Now I have to go on and solve the issue with the ballooning. Let's compare this to a clip from a previous video. So if you take a look at this clip, you can see that there's a serious amount of vibration going on. You can see that the tire has basically just fallen off the alloy. So I think the current alloy design is a really big improvement over this one. As you can see from the video, the Bead locking alloy really works very well um, and I was really pleased with it and one other thing I was really happy with was just how freely the wheel spins and how little vibration was there in comparison to the previous setup. So you could see before on the previous video you know I could barely hold on to the thing it was vibrating so much and I think a big part of that was the fact that I removed the Gorilla Tape from the inside. So you could see in that previous clip that the tire was ballooning like crazy right and, and even still the clamp was still holding the tire onto the alloy which I think was a great test and it's a real sort of visual demonstration that this design works but we're still left with the problem that tire ballooning you could run the car with the tires this way but the problem is you know you just end up running out of grip with that in mind I think my next step is probably to go and buy real tires so I'm thinking of even buying sort of go-kart tires or something like that just to test out I could still use my own alloy design, which I'm gonna to have to do, because the chances of you buying an existing wheel that has the coupling that you want is almost non-existent. So I think I'm gonna to have to stick with my own custom alloy design, but I can use real tires that are much more durable and a lot stronger than these. Um, another thing I'm thinking about is adding in a little valve here. This is completely airtight. You cannot squeeze any air out of there at all. So if I added a little hole here with a valve, I could fill it up with air, just like a normal tire. Uh, but again, you're still gonna have the issue of this weak um, rubber material. So I think I will purchase myself some go-kart wheels, try it out. If you've got any suggestions, please leave some comments below, I'd really appreciate it. At the moment, you know it's a lot of trial and error, but I, I think it's really, really important that you get the wheels right, because essentially they're the only part of the vehicle that's in contact with the ground. And if there's a lot of vibration here, it's gonna resonate through the car and just destroy a bunch of parts, right? You want this to be as smooth as possible, you want as much grip as possible, and you just want as much stability as possible, which is why I'm spending a lot of time trying to get these correct. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.